Okay, so the main issue we said about the driver. Previously, we had the ball a bit too far back. Yep. And there's a bit more on top of the golf ball there in terms of your setup. Okay, very much like an iron sort of setup. Yep. And with the ball and a tee peg and that sort of type of club, we need to get a little bit more spine tilt, get yourself behind the golf a little bit more, and that ball now further forward in your stance. It's more towards your left heel, which will encourage and help us hit the ball more on a flatter angle as opposed to coming down too mm-hmm. steep because what you did to sort of compensate for that setup just tee it down lower yeah. which sort of worked but it sort of encouraged more of a sort of a lower slicier flight yeah. and anyway to get the ball up here sort of keep the club face open and sort of try and almost hang back on it okay and what you'll see on here now this one on the left hand so the swing's not really changing okay just the setup change but because you're over the ball more now as we start coming to impact you can see this club is coming down still on the ball you can just see the blur of the golf ball now is going straight up in the air. So yeah. that golf ball has been struck with a downward strike more than we want, and the ball just loops up in the air yeah. very, very high. Compared to this one, when you're more behind the ball, if you look at the blur now of the club, that blur is starting to bottom out and be flatter into the golf ball. Yeah. Thus, the strike now, we saw the middle part of the golf ball has been struck. As we hit the golf ball here now, we're just a bit more behind the golf ball, just slightly encouraging. <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, it's straight up your left nostril, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. That's a very vertical... Flight. Now, if you had the ball teed lower, it would have been at the middle of the club face, but a very low flight, yeah. and probably just drifted off to the right slightly. And that's okay? what they do, yeah. Exactly. So, just being a bit more behind the golf ball just enables, you know, just, we still move to the left. We can still create power by moving this way to the target, by creating the body rotation and movement to the left side, and gives all the speed and power we need. But by being more behind the ball to start with, we're now going to create a shallower angle into the golf ball. And the first couple off the set of the club face, we're just bombed with them. They're really... Yeah got the club face flat out it's getting a bit used to that position now in terms of where your arms and the body in relation to each other Get the club face squaring up but in terms of the contact far better it's having that trust now we can just rotate through it's not going to go too far to the right we haven't got to start trying to swing it left to stop that because by being more behind the ball think about like a forehand shot in tennis mm. you dip more from low to high if you're coming down from high to low your hand can't <laughs> So the club face up, if you come from around here more, this hand can then just sort of rotate naturally over easier. You can square that club face up, get a more direct contact, and thus, well, hit the ball as far as you could do. And like I say, you would use that club, especially on Sanath and a golf course there, yeah. probably twice on those nine holes, maybe four and, uh, well, one and four, I guess. Maybe eight if you're playing really well you want to cut the corner. Yeah. But really, you've got to look at the driver and think, OK, what benefit is this club going to give me? Am I going to be able to hit this club? And if I hit this one perfectly... Can I get to the green in one less shot? Or can I save myself a shot by maybe reaching the green? Mm. If the answer to those questions are no, is it worth risking that? Can I put the ball in play and then just get the ball in the green in two with a five wood and a seven iron or a driver and a pitching wedge? Mm. Is it really worth getting that much closer to save yourself two or three clubs into the green? Are you that much more accurate from 100 yards from 130, 140? Probably not, no. compared to the risk you're going to be putting into that case. Okay, so look at the shots you've got. Is it worth taking that? Now, if you go to some course, like Celtic Manor 2010, yeah. you'll need that quite a lot. But then the course is a little bit wider and stuff, and there's not so many trees that are in close to the golf course there. So mm-hmm. it's playing that club, and again, choosing the right club for the job. Don't just think, oh, par four, par five, must be a driver. Yeah. There are some other rounds and you'd never even dream of using that club. Yeah. But sometimes you probably would use it anyway, because you think, well, it's a long hole, it's over 300 yards, it's a smash the driver. So yeah. use it sort of not sparingly, but when needed, okay? Mm. And the, the distance you're at the golf ball there now, you can hit a five or even a four or five iron down some of those second second and third off, for example. You need to cut the corner on them to get any advantage. Mm. And the more you try and risk that shot, you're saving one shot potentially. Mm. Not even that maybe, but you're risking two or three. So, but yeah, if you're using that club, setup changes, we said, ball further forward, get yourself in a position. If we look at this golf club now, we could see you're using a driver just because the ball now and the shaft are slightly leaning back behind and that ball position now is a bit further forward. You're in a slightly more tilted spine angle lean, yeah? Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Good. Right, have a couple more there, mate, and then we'll uh, <coughs> finish things off.